Hello and welcome. I'm Jan Willis, co-founder of the eBeam Initiative, and you're about to hear the results of our 10th annual luminary survey. First of all, big thank you to the 81 luminaries across 44 different companies who took the survey in July of 2021. And also a big thank you to all of those, all of you who have helped us over the past decade to make the survey possible. So what you're seeing in the chart is the participation in this year's survey with the green indicating the mass segment and the purple indicating the equipment segment. And together they represent about two thirds of the participants, which is consistent uh, over the past decade. Now, let me say a few words before we dive into the details. First of all, these are opinions. There are the opinions of the, the luminaries and we invite luminaries because we think that increases the credibility of the result. Now, I'll just be your reporter today, walking you through the results and helping you understand the charts. We'll have a panel of experts discuss and share their perspective on, on the survey following this. And then finally, you'll find the, the survey results and the videos available on eBeam. Okay, so let's get started. In our first result, you'll see in the chart at the bottom right, that 72% this year say that 2021 mass revenues will increase. And that contrasts to only 33% who were that positive last year and predicted an increase for the 2020 revenues. Well, in fact, according to the SEMI's annual photo mask report, the revenues in 2020 were $4.4 billion compared to the revenues in 2019 of 4.1. Now let's keep on this topic of mass revenues and another repeat question from last year. In the bottom right, you see that 74% this year say that EUV will have a positive contribution, contribution to 2021 mass revenues. And that contrasts to 66% who said the same thing last year for the 20. 20 mass revenues. Now let's stay on the topic of EUV and look at some of the infrastructure questions. So in this repeat question, we found at the bottom in gold that 75% say EUV pellicles for high volume manufacturing will be in use by the year 2023. Now, as we contrast that to 20, the 2020 results, we've actually had to cut the chart so that we can align the answers. And what you see quickly is that the two-year trend is converging on the year of 2023. Now, in another positive response about the infrastructure for EUV, we find that 72% agree with this first statement you see in the first line of the chart that actinic inspection will be used in the mass shot for EUV high volume manufacturing by 2023. And the way to read that first bar is that the blue and the green represent agreement, the orange and the red as you see later represents disagreement. In the second statement, we find that 42% agree with EV multi-beam inspection will be used in the mass shop for EV high volume by 2023. And both of these results are very similar to the, the result we got in last year's question. Now this year we split the third statement into two, so we won't contrast them to last year's result. But in this third statement, we made it more general to say any inspection of wafers will be used for the purpose of mask inspection for EUV high volume manufacturing by 2023. And we found that 60% agree with that statement. Whereas 37% agree with the specific statement that E-beam, multi-beam inspection of wafers will be used for the purpose of mask inspection for EUV high volume by 2023. Now let's turn to one more EV infrastructure question. And this, in this question, we see the luminaries a little bit more pessimistic this year. Looking at the bottom of the chart circled, we see that 23% say that EUV turnaround time will be much longer than 193 turnaround time today versus 10% who said that last year. 
Now, when we look at the combination of those who sit longer and much longer this year, we find 74%, and that was a similar result to last year. Now, it's not a surprise then to see that EUV tops the reasons for buying multi-beam mask riders. So EUV, EUV precision on the far left is ranked as the number one reason this year. And the way to read this, this chart is that we have six different boxes representing the six different reasons. And the rankings, um, the plot of the rankings are inside of each box with one being the number one reason. And then the dark blue shading represents the average uh, response in the height of the chart from last year's result. And what you can see is that the number one and number two reasons on the far left have actually reversed order. So again, this year, more precision for EUV is number one, more throughput for EUV is number two. Similarly, the number three and four reasons swap places. This year, number three is curvilinear ILT for EUV, whereas last year, the, the curvilinear ILT for 193i was third, and it's now fourth. And then finally, the fifth and sixth re, uh, reasons remain the same and are very similar in, in ranking. More precision for 193i and more throughput for 193i math. Still on the topic of um, uh, mask riders, we see that in the chart on the right, um, purchasing sentiment has risen this year for laser and VSB riders. So what you're seeing in that chart is the gold represents the 2021 result and the blue the 2020 survey result. And so in the far left there, you see that 38% said that purchasing would increase over the next three years for laser mass riders versus 32% who thought that last year. And then um, the specific responses to this year's questions are in the chart on the left, where green represents uh, a statement of increase, blue say about the same, and red decrease. So let me point you to the response for multi-beam mass riders where the prediction remains extremely high at 90% that um, purchases will increase over the next three years. Now on a different note, we look at a question that we've repeated from last year on deep learning, where we're asking about when will capabilities based on deep learning become a competitive advantage for any step in the mass making process. And when you look at this year's results on the bottom, in gold, you see that 22% indicate that the year would be by 2022, versus last year when 62% had predicted the year 2022. So when we see this kind of shift in the results, we know that the um, predictions are certainly less certain. Now let's turn to a question that we've asked over the last five years, and we can compare the results. So this year we found that 95% say ILT is in use today. And that's compared to 84% who said that last year. Now let's look at uh, some of the details you can see in the chart. So first on the far right, obviously then only 5% indicated that no layers use ILT this year. Now, when we look at the details, Circled, this is where we see the pattern of growth around the response of some critical layers of leading edge nodes use ILT, with this year's response being the highest at 41%. Now, this question was specifically um, about ILT in general. Now, let's turn to our new questions that pertain to curvilinear ILT math. Now, the first two questions were very similar, and it, it led to a, a somewhat complicated um, chart. So let me explain. What we were looking for in having two very similar questions was whether there would be a difference in the trend between the responses for EUV and 193i, as well as whether there would be a different perspective on 
um, the, the highest extent to which uh, curvilinear shapes would be used on mass versus the average. So when you look at the charts, what we can see and conclude is that there is a pattern of difference for 193i and EUV, but the pattern of difference is, is not distinguishable between the highest percentage and average percentage. So in the chart on the left, you can see that the participants said 69 or 69% of them said that 193i um, would use at least 20% curvilinear shapes on any given mass, whereas only 47% indicate that for EV, and that the pattern continued when asked the question about the average percentage, with 60%, the higher per percentage saying 193i mass would have curvilinear shapes, versus 39% on average for EUV. Now let's look at some of the top concerns in making curvilinear mass. And this is a similar question, and thus the chart looks similar to our multi-beam mask writing question. So what we've done again is each box represents um, uh, a concern in this case, and the height of the box represents the average response with one then being the, the biggest concern and the plot of the individual responses are inside the box. Since this is the first year we've asked the question, you don't see the blue shading. So in the number one ranks reason, we find mask inspection, followed closely by the number two reason of mask shop software infrastructure, including data volume, mass data prep, MPC or verification. The third and fourth reasons are closely ranked as access to multi-beam mass writers and ILT software. And then in the fifth and sixth positions are mass metrology and mass repair. We wanted to go on and further understand how important are these concerns? How big concerns are they? So what we found in then asking for agreement to one of these statements, we see in the top result that only 4% believe that concerns are insurmountable for now. And 71% believe that leading edge mass shops can handle at least a limited number um, of curvilinear mass by the year 2022. So with that, let's conclude by reflecting on how the luminaries are very positive and optimistic in general. In particular, the sentiment increased and, and even grew stronger that mask revenue is increasing and increasing for 2021. The luminaries are also quite positive um, that the purchasing will increase over the next three years for lasers and BSB machines, while multi-beam purchasing will remain very high. And then finally, in a, in a first attempt at getting a confidence in curvilinear mass making, the luminary's confidence is very high in this. So with that, I'd like to just say thank you very much to all those who participated again this year, as well as over the past decade. And the results are available at ebeam.org. So for now, please stay safe and we hope to see you in person next year. Thank you.